Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be talking about how we identify the AV node blocks. And specifically in this video, we're going to talk about first degree and then second degree, both type 1 and type 2 AV node blocks. When it comes to identifying the type of AV node block, I would argue that the second degree are actually a little bit easier to identify. We'll come to those in a second, but notice that uh, you have an absent QRS complex somewhere um, in the EKG pattern. Okay, there's clearly one missing here. Um, there's two missing in this one. So that's more a giveaway that you've got the second degree block. Um, and the reason I mention that is because the first degree doesn't have that. Now, when you first look at this pattern right here, uh, so forget the fact that it's a first degree AV node block. Okay, you might look at this and you might say that looks like normal sinus rhythm. And in fact, a first degree AV node block looks very similar to normal sinus rhythm. You can calculate the heart rate. Um, it's going to probably be between 60 and 100 beats a minute. But when we have normal sinus rhythm or anything that looks like that, we need to check one thing. Okay, And that is we need to check the PR interval. Okay, So right here, um, this is a QRS complex that could be from normal sinus rhythm. T wave over here on the right, we've got a QRS complex that's narrow, normal. Here's a P wave. Okay, Take a look at this um, PR interval. Now the PR interval is this uh, space between where the P wave starts to rise up, so right there where my mouse is, and really where the QRS complex starts to rise up. Okay, This right here is the PR interval. Okay, look at that distance right there. But then take a look over here. So here's where the P wave starts to rise up, and then look where the QRS starts to rise up. Okay, This distance is the PR interval. It's actually elongated here. Okay, So everything looks relatively normal. We've got a normal P wave, normal QRS, normal T wave, but the PR interval is elongated or extended. Now how do you know if the PR interval is elongated? The general rule of thumb is that if the PR interval is five boxes or less, give or take, it's normal. Okay, so look at this. So we can count over. It's a little bit low resolution here, but we can go one, two, three, four. So this PR interval is about four boxes. Okay, that's less than five. So that's a normal PR interval. So this would be maybe for normal sinus rhythm. This could also be for sinus bradycardia or tachycardia if I gave you more information. But look at this PR interval. Okay, Again, you start from the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS, roughly. Um, it's bigger than five boxes. Here's five right here. It's almost to seven, so it's about six and maybe two-thirds. That's bigger than five. So the general rule is if the PR interval is more than five boxes, um, then it's going to be automatically an AV node block. Okay, Now, for me... I don't really like counting boxes like that. Um, it's enough work counting it for the heart rate. So one thing you should probably get good at is just eyeballing this region right here. So this is not the true PR interval. This is actually the distance between the end of the P wave and the start of the QRS. Okay. Um, eventually, if you look at enough of these, you might be able to tell that that little horizontal line is elongated. Look at that line relative to this one. This one's really short. So I know this one's not uh, elongated just because of that. I don't even need to look at the whole PR interval. But because this is really short, I can say that's normal. This distance between the end of the P wave and the start of the QRS, this looks pretty elongated. So even without even measuring the boxes, I could probably say that this is elongated, and therefore it's probably an AV node block. Now, with a first degree AV node block, yes, you have that extended PR interval, but notice there's no QRS complexes that are absent. They're all there. Okay? I mentioned that for the, the second degree blocks, those ones have missing QRS complexes. But the first degree AV node block does not have it. So the best way to think about what a first degree AV node block looks like is everything looks normal. In fact, it can often be mistaken for normal sinus rhythm, but the PR interval is extended. And that's the best way to look at it. Now. No QRSs are, are dropped. That's not the case in the second degree AV node block. Now, second degree AV node block, there's two types, type 1 
and type 2. Notice in both of these there are QRS complexes that are dropped. But here's the way you differentiate between a type 1 and a type 2. Okay, um, The type 1 second degree block still has a normal P wave, still has normal QRS complexes where they're not dropped, and a normal T wave. And again, we can look at that right here. So P, Q, R, S, T. P, Q, R, S, T. The interesting thing about a type 1 block is that the PR interval starts out elongated, but it actually starts to increase in length every successive cycle. Okay, um, So if we look at this, I know this is technically not the PR interval. Um, that would actually extend out to the start of the P wave. Personally, I, I like just looking at this horizontal line. It makes it a little bit easier to eyeball this. So this one is shorter than this one. Okay, Shorter than this one. Definitely shorter than this one. And so what we see basically is that we have uh, the PR interval lengthening every time. Okay, As long as the last one before the QRS is dropped is longer than the first one, you can pretty much say that it's an increasing PR interval and it's therefore type 1. So notice the PR interval is increasing in size and then the QRS is dropped. When you have that extended increasing PR interval, okay, that's when you have um, a type 1 second degree AV node block. Now, like I said, just to reiterate, if you're comparing each one to the, to the successive one like that, um, it can be a little bit difficult to tell. So what I would say is compare the first one to the last one before the QRS is dropped. Okay? If this one is noticeably shorter, then you can say it's an increasing PR interval, okay? and it's type 1, sometimes called Venkebach. Now, for the other second degree AV node block, this is type 2. Uh, in this case, you still have QRS complexes that are dropped, that are absent, but the thing here is that it's a constant PR interval. And actually, sometimes it's not even extended. But the key thing with a type 2 AV node block is everything looks normal. They have a P wave, QRS, T wave, but then there are QRS complexes dropped. Okay? That clues you, it clues you in that's an AV node block. But then you look at those PR intervals. They look normal, actually. Um, you can at least say they're not changing in size. Okay, So because they're constant, they're not increasing in length, and the fact that you have a, a dropped QRS complex, we can say it's type 2. Okay, So kind of a big summary of this. First degree AV node block, no QRS complexes are dropped, but we do have an extended PR interval. No QRS complex is dropped, extended PR interval. Second degree type 1, now we have a dropped QRS complex, but that PR interval is increasing in size. And remember, you can choose to look at really uh, this distance between the end of the P wave and the QRS. I prefer to do that. And as long as that first one is shorter than the last one, um, it's type 1. So drop QRS, increasing size of the PR interval. For second degree type 2, drop QRS, but that PR interval doesn't change. And sometimes it can actually look normal. It might not actually look extended. And in this case, you have a second degree type 2. So now we've talked about the degree and type of block, but we can actually quantify the block. Okay, So let's talk about that, and then the video will be done. So this one is a 4 to 1 block. We could say it's a second degree AV node block type 1, 4 to 1. And what that means is that uh, between the absent QRS complexes, um, there are four uh, cycles, four complete cycles, or four QRSs. Okay? Um, we're assuming over here on the left side also, um, in fact, I could copy and paste this over there. We're assuming that there's an absent one over here. Oops. So assuming there is an absent one over there, how many uh, QRSs are between these two dropped QRS complexes? One, two, three, four. So because of that, there's four in between. This would be a four to one type of block. This one is a three to one block because here we can clearly see uh, two dropped QRS complexes. How many QRSs are between those? 
one, two, three. So this is a three to one block. So we can quantify these second degree AB node blocks as well. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the first and second degree AV node blocks. Um, in a future video, we'll go over a third degree block. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated, but we'll talk about that. And then we'll start getting into um, premature atrial contraction and premature ventricular contraction. Join us then. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.